Good night, Eve. Debbie? Hey, Debbie? I know. What is that? Dear divorce papers. It. This is the last and fifth tell-all of 90 Day Fiancé, The Single Life, Season 4. I never thought we would survive. So I was expecting some sort of explosive, like, reveal between Jamal and Louisa because last week they left us hanging with Jamal and Louisa magically being caught on tape talking in private backstage. You're <laughs> crazy. No, you might have drunk a little too much. Is that your fault? And then this episode, they act like it's nothing burger, an afterthought. They just have a clip of Jamal and Louisa getting in their SUV together. And they have a combo walking out to the SUV that seems totally staged and stupid because Louisa is like, Oh, where are you going, Jamal? And Jamal's like, I'm going to bed. I'm tired. But it's like noon out. The sun is fully shining. Then Louisa is like, Oh, Jamal, can I sleep with you? Then they get into the SUV and they're like, we're going to go get drunk and ratchet. And then we just pretend Louisa and Jamal never existed. Like we get no conclusion on this weird mess. They don't like play back that conversation overheard in the back room for Veronica. They like don't give her anything. And this just falls off the planet. Like we're done. Louisa and Jamal are gone. Bye bye. And then we jump backstage to where Chantal is teaching everyone to twerk and... Poor Veronica decides it's a good time for her to show that she can twerk with her flat ass. And she's not very good. She is stiff as a board. And then thirsty goldfish Debbie is like, I want to twerk with Chantal. That's so cool if I can say I twerked with Chantal on TV. Like, were you literally not just slut shaming her for not wearing panties in Greece? Like, what is this flipperoo? Now you're like best friends with Chantel because you're quote thirsty grandma. Then we're back to our viewer question situation, and Sean Robinson is like, which cast member would you hook up with? So sleepy eye Tim high on pills is like, oh, Chantel is gorgeous. I'd hook up with her. Sure, Tim, we believe you. Is Tim so high that he forgot that we? We just watched Louisa beg, scream, and cry for him on stage, and she is freaking gorgeous. And Tim couldn't even roll the eyes out of the back of his head to look at Louisa. But Tim keeps going. He's like, yo, it will. Let me roll my eyes back of my head. Take a look around. Okay, my eyes are open. Yeah, Natalie, she's a gorgeous girl too. I'd hook up with her. And now Tim is finally awake because he finally gives us a truth and he's like, yeah, I would pick Paola. Paola Blaze, the wrestler, is who he wants oh, to be smothered in bed by. And P asks, like, Paola doesn't even wrestle anymore. She had, like, one wrestling match in the conference room of a Hilton, like, three years ago. Then she had... Russ sell everything and move them into like an RV so they could do like the on the road mini home life. Then they sold the RV and now it looks like she's divorcing Russ. So like this is like what three years ago you're living in Tim? Have his eyes been so rolled far back in his head he has not kept up on the adventures and updates and the downfall of Paola Blaze? And then Veronica is like oh no offense Libby and Andre but Andre is Hot. I would bang him so hard. And then Timmy wakes up to tell us another truth because he's like, yeah, you know, wink, wink. If I was gay, I would take Andre to pound down too. Wink, wink. Okay, and Chantel is surprisingly smart about this one because she's like, yeah, let me think about all the single people on 90 Day Fiance. Mm, no, actually, Debbie's son. Oh, Ooh. Debbie's son, Julian, the dumpy little annoying cop. Tim is like instantly offended that she didn't pick him back. And he's like, uh oh, so you like a man in uniform? Is my brocade silk jacket not uniform enough for you? And thirsty Debbie and her little goldfish brain reset back to before she slut shamed Chantel for a full episode for not wearing panties and grease because she's like, You're such a princess, and Julian likes the princess type, so I could make that happen. Oh, I can hook up you and my son, Julian. 
So Chantel is like, yeah, tee hee hee, that would be great, Miss Debbie, if you can hook me up with your man in uniform son. Chantel clearly picked Julian just to avoid Tim and his, like, aggression on stage because he's been making comments the whole episode about how gorgeous Chantel is. But there is no way in hell Chantel is going from Drizzy Drake to Dumpy Frumpy Julian. He was just a safe choice because he's a non-reoccurring character and he is not there. And then Ty Ray is coming in hot because he's like, give me a slice of Loritza. And everyone's like, whoa, whoa, do you even know what you're getting into? And he's like, which Larissa do you want? Do you want the old Larissa or the blow up inflatable Larissa? And he's like, I don't care. I like both Larissas. I will have a slice of eat. Good to know, none of the women here pick Sarper. You'd have to dress up in a hazmat suit to go on a date with Sarper. That's how I feel. <laughs> we switched gears and it's time for Nutty Natalie to be served a dose of her own medicine and they bring Big That's Mike really on good. stage. Thank you. And then all of a sudden, Colty's mom, Debbie, is like scuttling off the stage with her little cane and she like pushes Caesar to the side who's trying to walk her back there. And she's like, I'm going to do it myself. Like, oh, I'm going to grab some paperwork backstage real quickly. Then she scuttles back on stage with her little cane with a little smirk on her face. And she walks up to Natalie and hands her an envelope. Inside are divorce papers from Mike to Natalie. You came to divorce me. Like, no, Natalie, you don't get to pretend that you don't know what's happening. She's like, what do I even do? Do I sign anything? What do I sign? What do I do? Oh, no. Oh, no. Please help me. Please help me. And it's like, no, Natalie, please take it to a lawyer. Have them look over it. Like, everyone's forgetting that Natalie has been divorced three times before. Then Goldfish Debbie, Miss Debbie, is like, oh, 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 Awful thing to do to this girl in pain. Can't you see she's a babe? And then you have Judas over here. It's like pointing to Colty's mom, Debbie, walking up to her and serving her pipers here on stage. You know, you shouldn't have done this on national TV, man. You just shouldn't have. You are scum. And then Colty's mom, Debbie, is just like, Ah, wait, wait. You know, if I didn't do it, someone else would have to do it. And I'm her friend. I'm her friend. I'm not your friend, Natalie. I'm your friend. But would you want to serve these papers to you? Your friend or you're not your friend? And Natalie's just like wailing and crying like, Oh, do I sign them now? What do I do? Tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. Everyone, please, please help me. Oh, no. Oh, no. I have no idea in America for me now. This boy is divorcing. So then Josh is buying into all this BS. He just suddenly feels bad for Natalie and he wants to be there for her and kind of support her through this. So he's like, yo. Don't sign anything. Like, you know, he wants to step in and just handle this for her. And then we learn that Big Mike has been in a relationship for the past year and it's getting serious the past six months and he's got a new girlfriend. So then we head backstage where these two Debbies are still fighting over this. Miss Debbie is like, you can't just ruin her life like that. That's not a friend. That's not motherly. You are just awful. And everyone... This is just like we're in some psycho world because Colt's mom, Debbie, is an arsehole. She's an awful person. But then everyone in the room, I guess, hates Miss Debbie more because they all side with Colty mom's Debbie. Colty's mom's Debbie is like, you're just a biatch, aren't you over there? You're a straight biatch. Then she's like, Natalie, I did this from the bottom of my heart because I love you, Natalie. I love you. And Miss Debbie's like, that's not how you treat your friends. Like, dude, neither of you are friends with Natalie. Yes, there may be a longer history with Colty Mom, Debbie, and Natalie because they've been on the show longer, but neither of you are friends with Natalie. Like, stop using her as this pawn in your war. So Battle of the Grannies is going on and everyone's picking their sides because then Chantel is like, well, actually, Colty's mom, Debbie, Miss Debbie had a lot to say about what I was wearing in Greece. And then Debbie runs with it. She's like, oh, well, you're a beautiful girl. You should be able to wear whatever you want in Greece. And that woman over there, she's a biatch. She's a big, mean biatch. And that is it. We have made it successfully through this five-part tell-all to the other side. Please make sure to like, click, and subscribe. And come back next week for a brand new recap.